Okay, in this tutorial, we'll continue with the shattering effects of an object. And in this case, let's take a look at this animation real quick, just to kind of give you an idea on, for the first step. You notice when it breaks apart, it breaks into small pieces and larger pieces like this. All right, so that's what we'll focus on initially. And we'll start with just a new object altogether. And so we'll do it in steps. So I'll add maybe, uh, uh, to keep it simple, we'll just add a cube to the scene. And maybe I'll scale it here in X. Got to give it a color so we can see it better. All right. I'll scale it up just a little bit like this. All right, so now I'll go into edit mode and maybe I'll, first of all, subdivide it. Let's see. I'll subdivide it like that. That gives some longer pieces like that that I don't want. I want it more symmetrical. So let me control Z that real quick and I'll just loop cut and slide it first. And then I'll subdivide it. Oh, it's not a tangle. I'm going to get them all. All right, at least I have them subdivided so I can, that I know it's symmetrical for starters. And then I come in and add the particle system to it. Just kind of a quick review, but we'll up this here in a second. Maybe we'll start it at, say, 75, end it at 76, like the previous lesson, give it a lifetime of 200, like that. Crank up the random values in here crank up the normal as well and in this case we'll use the uh, local axis as well let's say when we wanted to explode we have to first of all go give the explode modifier to it now particle system has to be first where'd my explode modifier go all right there it is and I'll use the cut edges like this and I'll just step through it real quick so I can see where these shards are. All right, and then I'll get the solidify modifier. All right, so we have the pieces like this. But of course, everything's exploding it basically symmetrically. So in case you don't want that effect, there's several things you can do. In this case, let's. For one of the things you can do is the normal means everything. Nor, using this normal force in the particle system, everything's going to be radiating out, radiating out perpendicular to each one of the faces. All right. So, the let's look at the local axis because this becomes important. Let me see where I am in here. All right. So the local axis shows the X direction facing this direction. Well, the importance of this is maybe the explosion starts over here and it's going this way. So you want things to be directed that way. So within the particle system, you can also change the X value up a little bit like this here. That way when it explodes, the effect will be pushing also maybe needs a little bit more. Let's see. Yeah, it'll be a little bit more than that. It kind of depends on the shape of your object, too, of course. And you can see the force now is pushing in that direction. So that's one thing you can do. All right, but now all the pieces are essentially the same size. If you look close, there's not, I mean, they're a little bit different, but we want them significantly different. So uh, since we're in, edit mode right here. Let's go get a vertex group. All right, so we'll create a vertex group. I don't know, we'll call it shards. Oh, I can't spell. Okay, shards, like this. And then maybe I'll just use half of the group for demonstration purposes, or maybe I'll, no, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do a little bit better than that. Let me see, I have this button deselected here so it's selecting both sides so I'll just get this I'll just and I'll make this a one 
and I'll assign it. And then I better go into ortho mode, like here, so I don't get the next group. And then, yikes, that is from there. So, and then I'll get this, maybe this group right here. And I'll assign that point 0.7. Make sure you assign it. And then the last group. I'll just make this zero just so you can see the effect like that. All right, now back to this regular mode here. So now let's run it here. Well, actually, you won't see any difference yet. Let's see. Now you don't really see any difference yet because what you have to do, you have to come into here and you come down into the particle system to the density field and you pick that vertex group up like that. And now you can see the size of the shards on the back side are significantly different. I'll stop it here so you can see size wise. I'll go full screen and rotate it a little bit maybe. Well, you can see the different sizes than the ones in the front. All right, so that helps. And so that really depends upon the weighting. Well, you could also affect it by subdividing this section even more to make it even smaller pieces. And that would help as well. But then the other thing you can do, you can put uh, force fields in here. So you run a force field across it. So maybe you start a force field over here in this general direction like this. So I'll add a physics force. So if I shift A, add force field, just a force like that. And I'll just give it some strength so you can see it right at the outset when I run it. So you can see that's contributing to the force out there itself. So then you just animate that over time as well. So say maybe at frame, where's our particle system starting up at frame 90 or 80? Where was that? Frame 75, 75. So maybe also at frame 75, I'll keyframe this by pressing I in this thing here. And then maybe the frame before, I'll make it zero, press I, keyframe that as well. And then maybe a couple frames later, well, let me do something first. Let me set a location keyframe here. And then maybe a couple frames later, I'll move this out this direction and set a location keyframe and also turn the strength back down on this as well. A lot of this just comes down to experimentation to see how it looks when you're done. All right, let's see what that looks like. We'll start from the beginning. Sometimes it doesn't reset. So, well, uh, that's a little flaky. So, well, so it is a lot of tweaking. It doesn't really matter what you do, it seems like. It's always a matter of tweaking. Even if I'm working in rigid bodies, working with Python code, I'm always tweaking in there as well because you can't do a ultimately perfect simulation, you know. I mean, it's just computers don't just don't permit it yet. They're just not fast enough. All right, I hope that gives you an idea and helps you with your animations, and I'll see you in the next lesson.